upload new videos on your chapter specific coding guidelines okay so let's start with your chapter specific coding guidelines remember guys in my previous video i discussed about the general coding guidelines so in today's video i will be starting to discuss your chapter specific coding guidelines so your chapter uh, specific coding guidelines is uh, 21 chapters so let's start first with your chapter 1 so in addition to your general coding guidelines there are guidelines for specific diagnosis and or conditions in the classification so this is the bulk of the exam questions most of the time so it's very important for you guys to understand the 21 chapters specific coding guidelines under what unless otherwise indicated these guidelines apply to all healthcare settings it is used in outpatient outpatient department emergency department in all healthcare settings in the office like that so please refer to your section 2 for guidelines on the selection of principal diagnosis so this is applicable to your in patients so we will not discuss section 2 for the meantime because we are talking about the cpc so let's start with your chapter 1 certain infectious and parasitic diseases so that is from your a00 to b99 so your chapter 1 um we are discussing about the certain infectious agents and parasitic diseases now in this chapter you will find the code for coronavirus which is um that's we which we are encountering right now the covid 19. the coronavirus already have a code in the in the icd-10 cm book been been present since the beginning and the new virus now is just a new strain of your, of your corona virus so we have available code here in your icd-10 cm book but for the meantime we will be discussing the first part of your chapter one we will have a chapter i mean a part two for chapter one because your chapter one is quite long and it's divided into two so let's start first with your letter a guideline your human immunodeficiency virus or your hiv infections so there are common guidelines in there are uh, guidelines here in reporting so it's very important for you guys to understand those guidelines because this is a common question in the exam as well so let's start with the first guideline like code only confirmed cases Okay, so code only confirmed cases. So code only confirmed cases of HIV infection and illness. This is an exemption to the hospital and patient guideline for section 2H because normally, even if it's not yet confirmed, if it's in patient, assume, usually assume as it is already confirmed because the treatment firm not confirmed and a confirmed patient is still the same when we're talking about the inpatient. Okay, so let's get rid of that first because we are discussing about the outpatient setting. In this context, confirmation does not require documentation of positive serology. Even if you don't have the results stating that it is a positive like or it's a reactive one, the provider's diagnostic statement that the patient is HIV positive or an HIV related illness is sufficient already as long as the, the the physician or the provider documents already a positive statement of hiv that is already um we can now assume that it's already a confirmed case because remember a provider will not document a, a diagnostic statement of hiv positive without any supporting the diagnosis or supporting documents or supporting lab results now it is very important as in our part as a coder it is very important that we only code for confirmed cases because when you coding a confirmed cases this will take a huge responsibility already because what the the department of health or health department 
what will go what will be the the what will they do just in case they encounter patients that uh, that is positive so what they do is like they will contact tracing so they will go and uh, they will interview the patient who does the patients having any sexual intercourse what because they need to know because to prevent spread of the disease remember that there's a possibility possibility when we have a confirmed cases already we have a lot of things we found uh, if we found out a certain patient that is hiv positive because uh, there are a lot of interventions to do in order to prevent the spread of the disease and we also need to inform the patient and we need to educate the patient just in case we already confirmed that the patients already have an HIV okay so we don't need to have a conf I mean a positive serology or culture HIV documentation as long as I mean we need that but the provider's diagnostic statement is already enough okay when we are coding HIV confirmed cases okay so let's start let's move on to your selection and sequencing of hiv codes okay remember in the exam most of the time they will test you regarding the sequencing like for example you have an option four options four choices you can eliminate the the first two i mean the first and the second option you can eliminate right away most of the time but you will be left with two options most of the time it's 50 percent chance of getting the correct answer and your tiebreaker with that two option is always your guidelines and those options usually the difference is only the sequencing so what code should go first what code should go second okay so guys it is very important you, that you know it by heart, the guideline. Because it's, I mean, remember in the exam, it's the time-pressured exam. Now, if you know the guideline by heart, even if like just merely reading, a lot, like for example, but if by like merely looking at the options, looking at the choices, I mean, you can easily um, check the differences of the options if you know by heart those icd-10 cm guidelines so let's start with letter a patient admitted for hiv related conditions meaning hiv related conditions remember um there is a difference between hiv and aids okay you can be a positive but you can be an hiv positive but without signs and symptoms yet you can be an HIV positive and you already have these signs and symptoms, which is also known as already as your AIDS. Okay? If the patient has an HIV-related condition, meaning the patients already have this AIDS or acquired immune deficiency syndrome automatic when you see like the patients already are, have an hiv related condition it is considered aids and the code for that is b20 the code for aids is which is the um uh, advanced course if the patient's having an hiv positive so if the patient is admitted for an hiv related condition the principal diagnosis or the first listed the diagnosis additional diagnosis codes for all reported hiv related conditions when you go to your code b20 you can see that in the includes node that it is the aids is already included in your b20 code if that means that when the patients already have an hiv related condition that is now considered aids and the code for that or the principal code for that is always b20 so if in the scenario they will indicate the word aids first thing in mind your first code should always be b20 except for if the patient is pregnant which we will discuss later on okay 
But every time you see like HIV related conditions. Now, the, the common question here is what are those HIV related conditions? This is the common challenge most of the time. Most of the time, if you are not medically uh, allied professional, so you, you have a like, I mean, your background is not that in-depth with when it comes to your diseases like that. So every time you see an HIV-related condition, remember with the patients having an AIDS, the common, um, the common um, diseases that they may encounter are those opportunistic infections because remember the immune system goes down. So, or, or the, the immune, there's an immunodeficiency already. So, so what are you going to do is like you always if there are infect if there are infections infections related conditions so those are most of the time common HIV related conditions but as a helpful guide guys you can always google it you can always research on those HIV related conditions because that might be that might help you guys as you go through the exam okay so sequencing so keep in mind that your sequencing is i have a summary here of the sequencing everything in here is summarized already here now if it's the patient is admitted for hiv related conditions your code first code should always be b20 followed by that hiv related conditions like kaposi sarcoma pneumonia any infections that may be rela related to opportunistic infections Okay, because your immune this system is already not functioning well so your first code is b20 even if keep in mind that the reason for encounter here like for example the patient came in uh the patient came into the clinic due to pneumonia and that pneumonia is related to aids okay even if the reason for encounter is pneumonia, your first code is still B20. Because remember, any HIV-related condition should always be, the B20 should always be sequenced first, followed by the HIV-related conditions, even if the reason for encounter is the HIV-related condition and not the AIDS itself. Okay, keep in mind, as long as it is AIDS, patient or there's already an HIV related can be B to always be B to always be B20 regardless if the reason for encounter is the HIV related condition because as per the guideline your principal or your first listed diagnosis should always be the B20 okay so that is your first guideline when you go to your uh, B20 code you have your includes there as I mentioned a while ago, acquired immune deficiency syndrome or your AIDS, AIDS-related complex, ARC, HIV infection, or symptomatic. When we say symptomatic, there's already a signs and symptoms of this HIV, so you are now considered AIDS patients. So as your guideline tell you as well, Tells us well, use additional code codes to identify all manifestation of HIV infections. So excludes one. When we say excludes one, they cannot be coded together. So any code below your excludes one cannot be coded together with your B20. Now those codes, those codes that is not or cannot be coded together with B20. So let's start with asymptomatic human immuno immunodeficiency virus infection status Z21. So we will be discussing later on your Z21, but the key, the key word here is asymptomatic. Remember, in your B20, it's symptomatic already. So they cannot be coded with asymptomatic because that is opposite, actually. Okay? If you have exposure to HIV virus, when you say exposure, we are not it is not confirmed yet if you have your HIV or not. Remember, in your B20, it's already confirmed and there's already an HIV-related condition. So they cannot be coded with exposure only because the first one, it's already confirmed. Or if it's in inconclu inconclusive serology evidence of HIV or R75, there's no confirmed result yet. So that's, I mean, 
that is um that's why they cannot be coded together with b20 because we don't have this specific result yet okay so those are under your excludes one okay guideline letter b patient with hiv disease related admitted for unrelated conditions like for example the patient has aids okay so the patient if the patient with hiv disease or aids is admitted for unrelated conditions such as traumatic injury the code for the unrelated condition the nature of injury code should be the principal diagnosis remember in our guideline letter a the patient came in for hiv related so your code is b20 which is the code for aids and followed by the hiv related condition in your letter b the patient came in with unrelated conditions so your first code as per your guideline you should code the unrelated condition first followed by the b20 if the patient has aids and came in with like traumatic injury which is totally unrelated to your b20 you can code first the unrelated condition b20 and if there are hiv related condition you can code them as an additional code so are we clear with that like if the patient came in for hiv related code first b20 if it's unrelated code first that unrelated conditions okay like common example here is your uh, like for example the patient came in with um traumatic fracture or leg fracture and the patient also diagnosed with aids so if the reason for encounter is the fracture it is totally unrelated to your aids because remember as i mentioned a while ago those hiv related conditions are most of the time those opportunistic infections most of the time now your fracture is not an infection it's a traumatic injury so that is totally unrelated to your aids so your code first is unrelated followed by b20 and hiv related condition if present okay whether the patient is newly diagnosed whether the patient is newly previous admission previous admission previous admissions encounter for hiv condition is irrelevant to the sequencing decision so your decision should always be on as per the guideline if it's hiv related or not related or unrelated letter d asymptomatic human immunodeficiency virus remember your code for b20 it's also known as aids or symptomatic or there's already an hiv related condition with your asymptomatic you are tested positive but you don't have any signs and symptoms yet because this happened especially with your coronavirus now with your covid 19 there are cases like asymptomatic but there's no signs and symptoms yet so you can be a positive with hiv you can be positive with your human immunodeficiency virus but you don't have your signs and symptoms yet so when do we use your z21 symptomatic human immunodeficiency infections hiv infection status is to be applied when the patient without any documentation of symptoms like for the keyword asymptomatic is listed as being like hiv positive known hiv 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 test positive or similar terminology those are our keywords when we will going to use your Z21 it's just a status and you don't have any signs and symptoms yet obviously when you go to your Z21 when you go to exclude one your B20 is included there because they cannot be coded together in the exam they will always ask about the difference of your b20 and your z21 so you need to know by heart and you need to read the whole scenario because most of the time at the beginning they will tell you that it's not no signs and symptoms and at the end they will tell you that, that, that there's already an hiv related conditions 
Okay? So keep in mind to always read the question. Do not use this code if a term AIDS is used or if the patient is treated for any HIV-related illness or is described as having any conditions resulting from his or HIV-positive status. So use your B20 in these cases. If you already have AIDS or HIV-related conditions, your code should always be B20 and not, not Z21. But if you don't have any signs and symptoms yet, you are going to use your Z21. Patient with inconclusive HIV serology. Remember when we go through your B20 codes a while ago, it is included in your excludes one is your R75. Meaning, patient with inconclusive serology but no definitive diagnosis or manifestation of an illness may be assigned to code R75 inconclusive laboratory. Because the, remember, the there are different tests that they are going to do. Like when uh, you go through your HIV for a you go for HIV testing, so there are cases like there are an increase of um, WBC, and there are additional confirmatory tests to confirm your HIV uh, status. Okay, so uh, while waiting, if there's no definitive result yet from the laboratory, so you may use first. The R75. Okay, this is different with Z21 because your Z21 is already confirmed positive, but you don't have signs and symptoms yet. In your R75, we don't have a confirmation yet. So it's inconclusive laboratory evidence of human immunodeficiency virus yet. And there should um, they need to do a confirmatory test. More tests like your ELISA test, they need, they need, they need to uh, perform additional uh, tests to confirm your HIV status. Okay? Letter F, previously diagnosed HIV-related illness. So keep in mind, patients with any known prior diagnosis of an HIV-related illness should always be coded to your B20. Because remember guys, when you are previously diagnosed with AIDS or you're previously diagnosed with HIV-related illnesses, you will be forever coded as B20 unless they will discover a cure for HIV or AIDS so there are chances that you that that disease might get away or may be healed but for now um once you are diagnosed with aids or hiv related illness you will be forever coded as b20 okay you, they can never be coded with z21 r75 or anything because once you are previously diagnosed with hiv related a conditions or aids you will be forever coded as B20. Okay. HIV infection in pregnancy, childbirth, and the preparation. This is a special guidelines with pregnancy when we discuss chapter 15 about pregnancy. Um, in your guideline with pregnancy, codes from chapter 15 always take sequencing priority. So they should always be coded first. If a pregnant woman came in with with AIDS or HIV related illness, your first code should always be 098.7. When you say 098.7, human immunodeficiency disease complicating pregnancy. And then followed by B20 or HIV related condition if the patient is admitted with HIV related, which is pregnant. But if the patient came in with a uh, pregnant woman came in with HIV positive, but there's no signs and symptoms yet. You need to use your Z21. So as you can see in the guideline, you just need to add O98.7 if the patient is pregnant. Obviously, there's a dash there because you still need to specify what trimester is it. Is it first, second, or third trimester? But but keep in mind that your first code should always be. O ninety eight point seven dash followed. I mean, there should be additional character there, followed by B twenty. If the patient came in, if the pregnant woman came in with HIV related illness, but if the pregnant woman came in with HIV with with 
I mean, with HIV status, I mean, we, the patient came in, pregnant patient came in to the clinic, and the patient is, is HIV positive, but there's no signs and symptom yet. You need to use your Z21 for the meantime. If there's a, there's no signs and symptoms yet of your AIDS or your HIV related illnesses. Okay? That is your HIV. Letter H, encounters for testing for HIV. If a patient is being seen, like remember there are patients who came in for just testing. So what should be your code if the patient just came in? Uh, doctor, I need to have my, I need to check my HIV status. So if the patient just came in for encounter, for screening for human immunodeficiency virus, your code should be Z11.4. Now, most of the time, if the patient came in for testing, counseling may also be done. Okay? Because remember, if the patient came in for testing, it's very important that you always need to counsel the patient. So, use an additional code for associated high-risk behavior if a patient with signs and symptoms is being seen for hiv testing code the signs and symptoms if they are available an additional counseling for z71.7 human immunodeficiency virus counseling may be used if counseling is provided during the encounter for testing guys in your z11.4 there's no signs and symptoms yet we don't have any confirmation yet that the patient is already hiv positive the patient just came in for testing purposes so your goals should be z11.4 okay when a patient returns to be informed of his or her HIV test results and the test result is negative, use code Z71.7 Human Immunodeficiency Virus Counseling if you only if you provide that counseling. If the results are positive, see previous guideline and assign as appropriate. So if the, it's positive, now here comes the here comes the time that you're going to code B20 or Z21 because it's already positive okay so in summary here are the codes involving your human immunodeficiency virus so your b20 human immunodeficiency virus disease or your aids or confirmed hiv with hiv related illness R75, Inconclusive Lab Evidence of Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Z20.6, this is just an exposure. So if, if you feel like you're exposed to HIV because you have multiple partners like that, so you may code it as Z20.6. Z11.4, Encounter for Screening Only or for Testing. If it's followed by counseling, you may use Z71.7. And your Z21 is for asymptomatic human immunodeficiency virus. Okay? So here are some of the examples that I need you guys to comment below your answer. I need to know your answer. Now, if you need more rationalizations, just don't forget to comment below. Put in your answer and then let me know so that I can further explain with you. So your example number one. A 25 male patient, 25 years old male patient presents in the clinic with pneumonia. The patient was diagnosed with AIDS two years ago, which is what is the ICD-10 CM code or codes for this scenario. So I don't have the answer yet. Please comment, comment below your answer for the number one and then your answer. Because I still have number two example. A male patient presents to the office with Kaposi sarcoma of soft of soft tissue. What is all the ICD-10 CM codes? Okay, so number one, a 25-year-old male patient presented to clinic with pneumonia. The patient was diagnosed with AIDS two years ago. What is the ICD-10 CM codes for this scenario? And example number two, a male patient presents to the office with Kaposi sarcoma of soft tissue. What is our the ICD-10 CM code? Comment below number two, put in your answer, and then I will double check if it's correct. And if it's wrong, I will definitely explain to you guys why. Okay, number three, a female patient came in at the clinic with rashes. The patient also has AIDS. 
what is are the ICD-10 CM course? Those are the three examples that I have. Please comment below your question, your answer, and then I will discuss this, your, your answers, in our next video before I start with the part two of your chapter one. So happy coding, guys. Hope stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.